Hi, good morning, and welcome to the ZP Vlog and Podcast. I'm sorry, re- welcome to the ZP Developer Zone. So we like to do this Developer Zone every Thursday at 8 a.m. London time. And you may notice that today um, we are late, and I apologize for that, but um, we're traveling, we're in very different time zones, um, so we have actually gone late on this. But let me just go forward anyway. Um, this week is quite short, so I'll try to be efficient. Don't forget the ZP Academy, free courses there. Don't forget that we're doing webinars four days a week at least, and we do do a vlog and podcast on Sundays. The webinar on Mondays is about um, Sensei All, Tuesdays about Julie, Wednesdays about um, Food Sense, and Thursdays about more sort of general um, development, biosense development is- um, issues and questions. Don't forget our collaborations. We do um, the collaborations are generally um, funded through sort of government sponsored projects, so we do do them. We are quite um, supportive. Um, <coughs> We do have jobs made available and we have the ZP developer zone. So let me just take a quick drink of water and I'll go forward a little bit faster now. Okay, so um, the reason that we're running this late today is because of workshops and I will explain that um, in the due course. So don't forget we have workshops. Um, If you see a link I'll put the link underneath the video at the end. Um, and I will, sorry, I will have put video, links underneath the videos once we've gone um, live. But don't forget, we do, do ha- we do have two workshops in November, one in the UK and one in Norway. Workshops <coughs> are the best way of really getting your answers, your questions answered. But that said, let's go forward a little bit more. We do have a couple of... Um, S cubed events coming up as well. There's a link I can see here, here already, and I will put the link underneath the um, video when we've finished as well. So I'm hoping some of the questioners today will actually come to this S cubed workshop in the UK. Unfortunately, it is a pay for, um, not workshop, it's a conference. So I hope they will come, but we'll see. There is an early bird re- um, registration. Um, if you're interested in getting live demonstrations, not just hearing words about our technology, then I would definitely um, take a look at a link that I have here. And I'm gonna put the link underneath the video. We do do live demonstrations every month. So we've got one on Julie, one on um, Sense All, one on Data Science, and one on Food Sense um, as well. The reason that um, my voice is slightly croaky today and we've gone late is because um, we were doing a workshop all day yesterday. These are called corporate workshops and we actually do these on site with um, essentially large corporations um, where we discuss biosensing and brainstorming them, etc. So if you're interested in having ZP on site, um, then you're welcome to do that. Hence, I've lost my voice today. And hence, um, we're a little bit late because we're very much in a very different time zone we've been traveling. Question number one here, I should really just call this, this is about calcium sensing or sensing in the sweat. I will go quite quickly. These people have been asking questions over a few weeks, so much of this could be a slight repetition, so I want to be respectful of time. Um, first of all, to say that the Easy Flex is something that we are discontinuing. We're replacing it with a single purpose biosensor circuit. So whenever people now ask me about the Easy Flex, I'll say to them, we won't support the Easy Flex. We will only support the single purpose biosensor circuit. Um, there is a link in this video um, about that. Um, so they're interested in um, our list of biosensors. Are these non-invasive? Well, non-invasive means that, you know, can they be used in sweat? Many of these sensors can be used in sweat. Um, which of these are compatible with the with with the version of Easy Flex? We I won't be supporting the Easy Flex going forward. So the quick answer is um, we can make them compatible with the single purpose biosensor circuit. So if your interest is calcium, when you order the single purpose biosensor circuit, we'll make sure it works with calcium. If your interest is lactate, we'll make sure it's compatible with lactate. But we will not be supporting Easy Flex going forward. Just a way of history, Easy Flex is probably over 10 years old at this point so um, in the end you do have to retire these kind of electronic products um, and replace it with I think I don't doubt it it's something much um, better Um, so for example you know if you're going to use the calcium sensor yeah you can use it in sweat if you so wish there's a lot of work that you have to do in order to make that work so for example ZP can have a good calcium sensor 
we can have good electronics. But there's a still, you know, the person who's trying to build this system still has to do a lot of work themselves. Um, so many of our sensors, including the calcium sensor, for example, can be used with a single purpose biosensor circuit and our sweat patch. But it still leaves a lot of work for you to do. We have talked about this in the past where you can put our sensors into these um, sweat patches. We do do a lot of wearable type technologies um, and um, we've done at least a, a note um, on lactates. Again, if our, this is a bit of a repetition so I won't dwell on it but we have looked at lactate in the sweat in the past. Um, so the only big difference these days then is um, I could change the word here from lactate to calcium. You need the hardware, which is the single purpose biosensor circuit. I won't support any other, I won't support the Easy Flex. And the sensors you can get, I've put here quarters on, but you, just, you can use the calcium sensor um, and you need a sweat patch. Um, here's the single purpose biosensor circuit, and I'll make sure there's a link here. Um, and um, I would, this is the only circuit that we're, we're going to support um, going forward. So I think with that, I say thank you. So yes, you are correct in your questions. You need a calcium sensor, you need a capillary um, kit, and you need a single purpose biosensor circuit. But there's still a lot for you to do as well. So ZB is not giving you an out of box solution. There's still these engineering and science for you to work on as well. So I'll round it up with that. And as I say, it's been quite quick this week. I've put a lot of um, questions in for next week. As I say, um, we've been doing a corporate workshop this week, um, hence a slight loss of voice, but hopefully get it back um, by Sunday's vlog and podcast. Okay, thanks very much.